senses, or your abilities, but on God's word. God is not looking or interested in your ability. First Chronicles 28 9 says, And you, Solomon, my son, know the God of your father. Have personal knowledge of him. Be acquainted with him and understand him. Appreciate, eat, and cherish him, and serve him with a blameless heart and with a willing mind. Willing, willing mind. For the Lord searches all hearts and minds and understands all the wonderings of the thoughts. If you seek him, inquire for him. And for him, and require him as your first and vital necessity, you will find him. But if you forsake him, he will cast you off forever. Isaiah 119 says, if you are willing and obedient, you should eat the good of the land. See, what I'm trying to get you all to understand is that this is a heart matter. That's all it is. Do you have a heart to bring glory to God? Do you have a heart to be a partaker of his kingdom building? Remember, we just read that God looks at the heart. Here are some scriptures to help you resurrect some life in your faith. Mark 11, 22 says, But Jesus answered and said unto them, Have faith in God. Have the faith of God, that is, the faith which God gives. And verse 23 says, For verily, verily, I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Verse 24, Therefore I say unto you, that what things soever ye desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and ye shall have them. And when you pray, when you stand praying, forgive. If you have all against any, that your Father also, which is in heaven, may also forgive your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father, which is in heaven, Forgive your trespasses. You may say that I need, that all I need is for God to give me more faith. I'm sorry, but God is not going to give you more faith. If God gave you more faith, then he would be the respecter of persons. And God is not a respecter of persons. We see that in Isaiah 25, 8, it says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. But as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and snow comes down from heaven, and return not there again, but water the earth and make it to bring forth and sprout, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Jeremiah one twelve says that, Then said the Lord to me, You have said well, for I am alert and active, watching over my word to perform it. Jeremiah 11.5 says, that I may perform the oath which I swore to your fathers to give them a land flowing with milk and honey, as it is this day. Then answer, Amen. So be it, O Lord. And in Numbers 23, 19, it says, God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. Has he said it, and, has, and shall he not do it? Or has he spoken it, and, sh and shall he not make it good? In other words, we want to get to the point where, regardless of our circumstances, regardless of what our senses partake, <coughs> Regardless of how we feel, we're gonna we're gonna go by what God's word say. Amen. Amen. Okay. Um, Luke seventeen one. It says, "Then said unto his disciples, is it, poss it is impossible, but that offenses will come. But woe unto him, who woe to whom they come." Verse two. It was better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck, and that he be cast into the sea and that he should offend one of these little ones. Take heed to yourself. If your brother trespass against thee, rebuke him, and if he repent, forgive him. And if he trespass against thee, against thee seven times in a day, and seven times in a day turn again unto thee, saying, I repent, you shall forgive him. And the apostle said unto, them, unto him, Lord, increase our faith. Lack of faith is not the problem. We have, we use, and we, we have, and we use faith all the time. Just think about some of these things. Every time that you use any form of transportation, including walking, you're using faith. Every time that you use your ATM card, your debit card, or your credit card, you're using faith. Every time you go to the mailbox or a bank, when you have monthly income come in on a certain day, you're using faith. Every time you mail a package, you're using faith. Every time you order something online, you're using faith. Every time you put gas in your vehicle, you're using faith. Every time you get into your vehicle, you're using faith. 
Every time that you go and order something in a restaurant, you're using faith. Every time you plug something to an electrical outlet, you're using faith. Every time you pay a bill online or by mail, you're using faith. Every time you take medication, you're using faith. I can continue on with this, but you get the point. Also, God has taken this excuse about being more faith away from you. 1 Samuel 26, 23 says, The Lord rendered to every man his righteousness and his faithfulness. For the Lord delivered thee into my hand today, but I will not stretch forth my hand against the Lord's anointing. What I want to do is give you some examples of faith in the Old Testament and faith in the New Testament. Psalms 119.90 says, thy faithfulness, thy faithfulness is unto all generations. Thou hast established the earth, and it abideth. In Romans 12.3 says, For I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. Whether that measure of faith is a thumble, a thumble full or a trunk full, he is given to every man and woman on the face of the earth the same amount of faith. So you cannot say that you don't have faith because God has given you his faith. And guess what? It's not your faith. It's his faith. Amen? Not only has he given you faith, he's also given you grace. Uh, Psalms 145, starting in verse 1, says, I will exalt thee, my God, O King. And I will bless thy name forever and ever. Verse 2 says, Every day I will bless thee, and I will praise thy name forever and ever. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised, and his greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall praise thy verse to another, and shall declare thy mighty acts. I will speak of the glorious honor of thy majesty, and of thy wondrous works. And men shall speak of thy might, of the terrible acts, and I will declare thy greatness. They shall abundantly utter the memory of thy great goodness, and shall sing of thy righteousness. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and great mercy. The Lord is good to all, and his tender mercies are over all his works. All thy works shall praise thee, O Lord, and thy saints shall bless thee. They shall speak of the glory of thy kingdom, and talk about thy power, to make known to the sons of men his mighty acts, and the glorious majesty of his kingdom. Thy kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, kingdom, and thy dominion endureth throughout all generations. For the sake of time, I'm not going to read the whole, the whole passage. But all verse 140, excuse me, all chapter 145 in the Psalm is talking about how good God's grace is. Matthew 5:45 says that ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven, for He maketh the sun to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. In other words, God does not show favor to anyone. He had, like the scripture just says, he has the rain that comes down on the good and the bad, and he lets the sun to shine on the just and the unjust. And in 2 Corinthians 12, 9, it says, And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for in my strength is made perfect in weakness. My gladness, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities than the power of Christ at my rest. So we see it's God's faith. We see is his grace. And now I'm going to talk about a couple of scriptures on peace. In Isaiah 55, 10, it says, For the mountains shall depart, and the hills be removed, but my kindness shall not depart from thee. Neither shall the covenant of my grace be removed, save the Lord that had mercy on me. And in John 14, 27, it says, Peace I leave you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, I give unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. So we see it's God's faith, it's God's grace, it's God's peace. Guess what? It's also God's <coughs> In Psalms 8.3 it says, When I consider the heavens, the works of thy fingers, the moons and the stars which thou hast ordained, what is man that thou art mindful of him, or the son of man that thou shalt visit him? But thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and hast crowned him with glory and honor. Thou hast made him to have dominion over all the works of thy hand. Thou hast put all things under his feet. All sheep and oxen, yea, and the beasts of the field, the fowl of the air, and the fish of the sea, and whatsoever passeth through the path of the sea. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. And in John 15, 8, it says, Here it is my, glory, is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit, 
so shall you be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Continue in my love. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. It's also his joy. Nehemiah 8.10 says, Then he said unto them, Go your way, eat the fat, and drink the sweet. Send portions unto them for whom nothing is prepared, for this day is holy unto our Lord. Neither be ye sorry, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. In Psalm 16.11, it says, Thou makest me to know the path of life, in thy presence is the fullness of joy, in thy right hand is bliss forevermore. And in John 15, 11 says, These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy may remain in you, and that your joy might be filled. Guess what? It's his healing, too. Isaiah 55, excuse me, 53, 5 says, But he was wounded for our transgression, and he was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. And 1 Peter 2, 24 says, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, being dead to sin, should live unto righteousness, whose stripes we are healed. It's his Holy Spirit, too. Ezekiel 36, 27 says, And I will put my spirit within you, and cause you to walk in my statutes, and ye shall keep my judgments and do them. And I will pray the Father that he would say, he will give you another comfort, that he may abide with you forever. And verse 17 says, even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and ye shall, and he shall be in you. And Mark 9, 17. Uh, the account is, um, Jesus had just took three of his disciples on the Mount of uh, Transfiguration. And, you know, his glory shone before them. And as soon as they came down from the mountain, um, verse 9, 17 says, And one of the multitude answered and said, Master, I have brought unto thee my son, which hath a dumb spirit. And whithersoever he taketh him, he teareth him, and foameth, and gnashed with his teeth. And pining away, and I spake with his disciples, that they should cast him out. And they could not. He answered them and said, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him unto me. And they brought him unto him. And when he saw him, straightway the spirit tear him. And he fell on the ground and wallowed foam. And he asked his father, How long is it ago since this came upon him? And he said, Of a child. And oft time he cast him into the fire and into the water to destroy him. But if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help him. Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believe. Mark 9, 24. And straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. See, we don't need more faith. What we need to do is to get that unbelief out of us. You need the Lord to help you get rid of your unbelief. Faith and unbelief or faith and fear or faith and doubt cannot exist in the same body because they are in opposition to each other. In James 1, 5, it says, If any of you lack wisdom, let a ask of God be given to all men liberally, and abradeth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavers is like a wave of the sea. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he wavers like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. But let that, not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. If you're standing in faith for something, and you have faith for that same thing that you're standing in faith to, what you're doing, you just have opposites. Uh, they say opposites attract. Faith and fear cannot stay in the same body. It can't because you're fighting against each other. And you're going to either love one and hate the other or the other way around. Instead of